Alright, so it's us, we just have a and welcome to my second part. <coughs> Excuse me, a uh, bit of a crap stuck in my throat. Second part of Let's Play Empire. Or, wow, epic fail. Let's Play Rise of Nations, Thrones and Patriots. But um, what I've uh, what I've got set up for here is just it's just your basic skirmish map, and in it I'm just gonna sh show you the basics of Rise of Nations and actually I'm hoping that my computer ally doesn't kill off my uh, enemy before it's too late or if I can declare war on him no I can't but um so it's uh let's start with our resources to the building blocks of everything and um Rise of Nations collects resources in a different way than say you know Empire or not yeah like Empire or like um, Asia Empires was, was w what I was looking for but um you can see that each city has its um, own set of resources around it and there's five basic sorry six there's food timber metal oil wealth and knowledge are all your resources and each city uh, surround it can hold five farms which you build with your citizens they can hold if there's a nearby there's a mine and the amount of people that can mine is based on the the um, the size of the mountain and then there's forests which is also based on the size of the forest is how many people can create timber and what's different about this is that your resources are constantly coming in depending on how many people you have stationed mining or whatnot so that means that your re resources never run out and there's a constant steady stream of them and in the top corner here uh, right now it says you I'm making plus 190 food with every um, every minute I believe is the uh, algorithm for that so that's how you collect resources your your three basic timber uh, food and metal and uh, let's move let's move down the list to oil uh, to build oil you just put a citizen and you tell them to build the oil field on one of these oil patches and wealth is created by either having temples in your city uh, and then once you have temples there then um or it's either temple yeah temples increase the taxation of holy shit there's a nuke coming on we just watch this because these are pretty spectacular oh yeah just, Washington just got nuked anyway um so now I just lost my train of thought oh wealth wealth is created by temples which is here's a temple um, there it is and that increases taxation based on the borders that are surrounding your territory and we'll get to borders a bit later but um so the more territory you have the higher your taxation is and therefore the more wealth you accumulate and then your second way to create wealth is with caravans that go in between your cities to um to trade so and then all oh, oh sorry I forgot knowledge knowledge is created at your universities and you just put uh, professors in those universities or scientists and they it gradually accumulate accumulate knowledge but what's different about rise of nations is the cities and cities are kind of your the building blocks of your empire and you can only build ter buildings in sort of a, a certain area around your city and your cities also give out what are or give out borders and the borders of your empire uh, function as a very it functions kind of like a buffer zone and you can only build stuff within your borders you can't go without you can't go without your outside of your borders and uh, also when you bring military troops outside your borders what they're going to need to do is they're need, going to need to have a supply wagon with them I actually don't have one built and if they don't have a supply wagon with them they will once they enter another territory so I'll just have these guys enter a territory right here they will gain attrition damage and um, attrition damage slowly eats away at your unit's health and um, certain 
there's things you can do to counter that, but the best way to do that is to have a supply wagon with you that has a radius, and if your units are within this radius of supply, then they do not get hurt. And um, so uh, it, it's a really interesting concept, and I really love it, and it really makes those the borders really key to your strategy and a supply wagons key to your strategy because uh, each nation, I'm playing as the Russians right now, each nation has different abilities and one of the Russians ability is to do times two attrition damage which is sort of like the Russian winter and uh, when I would always play online uh, I would always just build uh, Cossacks or cavalry and I have like a squad of them would they would just run around um, my, my base and uh, attack any unit, any armies that would come in and they just attack their their um, supply wagons and then they get like 32 attrition damage which means they're losing like 32 health every second and then I would just annihilate them and uh, that's usually what was my strategy and it was very very effective but um what else is there to say about Rise of Nations that's really different to um, you know the fundamentals I should also note that um, as the more cities you, the more, um, another nuclear launch, the more buildings you put around your cities, the more uh, wealth they create, the bigger they get, and the harder they are to take down. Oh, there you go, that's something. In order to take a city, you have to uh, reduce it to, um, to zero HP, and then have infantry come in and they capture that city, and then there's a little time in between where you assimilate the city and then it becomes yours and creates a, bo uh, a border for you. So you can't really wipe out enemies, like once you destroy an enemy, you get all the buildings he had in his city, so it's usually to your benefit not to destroy everything in the city but just to uh, destroy the sort of the main hub and then t and then take it over with infantry and then you gain everything that is around the city so lots of uh, really unique ideas you'll start to um, be more familiar with the uh, the basic gameplay as time goes on but um, for now I guess uh, I guess that, that gives you a pretty good uh, idea of what Rise of Nations is about. So I'm just gonna take a. I have a nuke all prepared for this, and uh, Washington's been hit pretty hard. It's been hit by like three other nukes already, and I'm just gonna nuke it again, just because I'm an asshole. And there she goes. And I have a small army here. Oh my god. Oh my god. My ally is gonna nuke it right after. Man, there's nothing left. There's nothing left. And then I'm gonna have my troops come in to the city and take it, and it's been reduced and captured. And with that, I think uh, New York, the last city, is uh, there were two computers, but I blitzed the one at the early on in the game and took their city. So, oh my God! Oh. One quick thing before I forget, before I forget, governments. That is something very different about Rise of Nations. Governments. You can either choose to be, uh, go through one wing where you either become a despotism or a, or a republic, and then from there you go to monarchy and then socialism, and then from the republic side you go to democracy and then capitalism. And each has their own strengths and weaknesses, and depending on what you choose, and it also can be a game changer. But uh, we've managed to defeat the other enemies. That's going to be it for now. Thank you guys for watching. I'll be sure to be delivering more um, explanation on the Rise of Nations gameplay and sort of military tactics as time goes on. But that gives you a basic rough idea of how the game is played. And join me next time where I will be fighting the Korean War. Stalin out.